Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. I'm not here to prove to you that I am good or bad. I'm here to tell you that you are great, you are good. And if you follow my instructions, you will feel, you will see, you will know that you are great, you are good. You will feel that you are great, that you know God. Please stay with us to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's program will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Oluxis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Thai, Turkish and Urdu. Warm-hearted viewers, if you visit New Zealand, you will be greeted with Katie for Hairque. It's How Are You in Māori, one of the official languages in New Zealand. I am Charlotte. The charitable people of New Zealand admire your benevolent heart. May you be wondrously graced with the generosity of the divine. The South Pacific Island nation of New Zealand has two main islands, the North and the South, along with many other smaller islands. The country's residents originate from a rich blend of cultures with indigenous Māori as well as European, Pacific Island and Asian influences. As the island's first inhabitants, the Māori people have a history language and traditions that are central to the New Zealand way of life. Many Māori sacred areas are preserved as historic sites and the Māori people also have representation in the nation's parliament. The islands are diverse and spectacular. More than 20% of the country's land is dedicated to national parks, forest areas and reserves, with terrain that ranges from lofty mountain peaks to sheltered ocean bays. These natural areas are inhabited by abundant native flora and fauna. Protected species include unique flightless birds like the kiwi, takahe and the herbivorous owl parrot or kākāpō, which can live for about a hundred years. During her Ocean of Love lecture tour in 2000, Supreme Master Ching Hai accepted the invitation of sincere truth aspirants to visit this beautiful country and share God's wisdom and love. Please enjoy part 6 of the question and answer section following the enlightening lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai titled The Reunion of Souls in Auckland, New Zealand on April 27, 2000. You would like to ask me some questions now, or you want to have a glimpse of heaven? <laughs> How many heaven? How many? <laughs> okay, fine, fine, okay. It's very simple. I will show you. But uh, the work is yours, okay? I can only show you, but you must work, <laughs> right? I cannot work for you. It's a little bit, not very quiet here, but I have shown you. You come home and do it, okay? You will enjoy Enjoy. 
Okay, you have any question? Okay, bring, bring the first ones. I'm sorry because of shortness of time, but you could do this at home, yeah? Have any one of you see some lights at least? So quick, yeah? Have you? Raise your hand. Light, or, oh yeah, thanks, that's good. Wow, that's, that's good just for <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> You're quick. <laughs> You're very pure, that's why. Very pure in such a not quiet environment and just two seconds you still can see. I told you, yes, we, we can get immediate enlightenment. Some of you see some heaven scenery or not? Yes? Raise your hand. Yeah? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, questions, please. In the last days, many false Christs will appear. Again? <laughs> <laughs> showing great signs and wonders so as to lead, if possible, even the elect astray. How, without being initiated, can one tell whether you are true or false? You can't. You can't tell whether I'm true or false, so it's up to you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, of course, but there are some, some little things that you can tell. For example, not because of me, if you meet a master, you immediately feel something, all right? or you don't. Either you feel something good about that person, or you don't. We do have this intuition. Even sometimes we see a stranger in the street, we feel like, oh, yeah, she gives me good vibes, she's lovely, she must be a good person. And some person we just see for the first time, we feel kind of, we don't want to talk to that person. We are a little scared. Yes, we have this intuition. Or else we come home and pray to God, please God, let me know who is a good one. Yeah? And then you follow your heart. Hmm? No one else can tell you. Yeah? <laughs> you can only tell from outside, but inside you cannot. Unless you go into a higher spiritual level, then you can see me like a mirror. But from human to human standard, you cannot see anything. I'm not here to prove to you that I am good or bad. I'm here to tell you that you are great, you are good. And if you follow my instructions, you will feel, you will see, you will know that you are great, you are good. Forget about me, I'm good or bad has nothing to do with you. Just so that you feel good, that's all. Yeah? You feel that you're great, that you know God. And suppose you don't feel like that, you can always leave. I don't charge any money, I don't follow you to your house, I don't call you at all. <laughs> I'd be gone tomorrow. And you'll be lucky to ever catch me again. So don't worry if I'm bad or good. <laughs> Follow your instinct. Learn to know, to remember your greatness. That's what I'm here for. Not here so that you think I'm great. Okay? That's a different question. I'm here to show you that you are great. Yeah? And if you want to know your greatness, then just follow my instruction. Not follow me. Follow my instructions. Yeah? Okay? Should our children be vegetarians too, Master? Thanks. Yes, because children also have souls and they're also God. So if they wish to be, that means they're okay. We can talk logically and reasonably, and if they want to, they can be, they should be. Because children who are vegetarians are very healthy. Hey, look at me, I'm pretty. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look at her, she is so beautiful. She looks like a movie star and she's vegetarian, no? Is she not beautiful? Yeah. Our fellow initiates, when they are pregnant, the babies are vegetarians from the mother's womb already. And when they are born, they are the most beautiful babies if you compare to other babies nearby. They're born pinky, healthy. And other children, sometimes they're born blue and, you know, purple. Yeah, really, really. No, you, you go and, and, and take a look at newborn babies. Sometimes they're so blue, so dark. But our children are always born pinky, healthy. 
and cry the loudest. <laughs> yeah. This next question is playing a game of blankety blanks, asking you to fill in the rest of the sentence. Can you please explain what should be the aim of human life? We should meditate to achieve. And that's the question. The aim of human life is to know yourself, to know that you are God, that you're connected with God. Yeah? And we meditate in order to calm this busy, busy thinking mind so that we can recognize the true self behind this mind. Just like to recognize the driver, not the car. Yes, sister. I would love to know the truth. However, it seems strange to stop drinking wine, etc. Oh, Whereas, is it? <laughs> <laughs> then she goes on. Whereas all the cakes and white sugar products are as harmful, I always experience that it is more important to have a real thirst. I just want to know what to put first in every moment. What to put what? What to put first in every moment. What should be the first? What, like, what is the priority? Yeah. God is the priority, not the wine. <laughs> okay, you bargain all the time. <laughs> you like to know God, but you like to enjoy all these poisons. I don't know why you like wine so much. All this alcohol has been proven that they're damaging to the brain cells. They numb your nerves. They make you less intelligent and important. <laughs> if you like to continue drinking this kind of poison and pay a lot of hard, sweating, earned money for it, welcome. Hmm? If you want to know God, forget that. Yeah, it's just a little wine compared to great heaven and the whole universe. They are better than wine, stuff are better than wine. When you meditate and you are in ecstasy, it's better than getting drunk and hang over. Really. Next one. Would Master please enlighten us as to the spiritual path of animals? Do domestic animals such as cats and dogs choose a situation in life which will assist them spiritually, can they achieve supreme enlightenment? They will in their own time. Animals are great friends of men. Sometimes a dog, a cat can teach us wonderful, unconditional love lessons. So they have chosen to be animals. So for us, for our sake, we should love them, assist them, and take care of them. And whatever, whenever they at attain enlightenment, that's their own choice. They will, they will get there whenever they want to. Okay? <laughs> they know. I have always talked to Kuan Yin by talking to the stars, but I always believed I was talking to a goddess, as I am a spiritual person, not religious. What is the difference? What is the difference between a religious and a spiritual person? Mm. Is that right? Yeah, she believes she's talking to a goddess and asking, I'm a spiritual person, not religious, what is the difference? With I regard don't, to the Kuan Yin. I don't really know. I think we look in the dictionary, see what's in the difference. <laughs> huh? <laughs> to me, a spiritual person is the one who aspires to know his origin, and not only aspiring, but knowing also, experiencing his own divine quality, his own God inside. That is a true spiritual or even true religious person. What can I do to keep up meditation daily when there is not enough waking hours in the day? Can I wake up? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes to wake up when we're stuck in bed, but we have to try. Yeah? Suppose if you have to get up to work, then you must. You must. For like $2,000 per month, you wake up every morning, 5 o'clock. Yeah? For God, you don't wake up. <laughs> so what am I to do? Hmm? So make your own priority choice. We can wake up a little earlier than usual 
and then get used to it. For example, okay, it's too early to get up at three o'clock. Don't wake up at three o'clock. Normally, you wake up to work at five o'clock. Okay, then wake up like twenty to five the first day, or ten to five even, or even five to five. And the next day or next week, ten to five. Yeah, get yourself used to with the idea and reward yourself abundantly. Tell yourself, okay, if you wake up early today, I'm going to give you a double, double bagel, for example. Yeah, or one more cup of cafe latte. Yeah, <laughs> whatever your mind loves to have, reward it. Reward yourself. You must love yourself also, because let's face it, we have only one this physical body, and we are so tired sometimes. We work so hard, eight hours, ten hours a day, just to keep this machine running, and then we have to attend to, you know, sometimes other work like family, wife, children, and parents. Friends, neighbors, relatives, etc. We really are very hard demanding on this physical body. So, of course, if you cannot wake up in the morning for meditation, forgive yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself, but train yourself slowly. Uh, watch TV less, you know. Sleep a little earlier so you can get up better. Or whatever the activities you used to do. Too much before, in order to pass the time when you are bored, use that time for knowing God. It is a matter of organization. I'm also pretty busy. You don't believe it. I sit here looking pretty, but I'm very busy too, and it's hard for me also to get up early sometimes. But you have to put an alarm clock, yeah. Sometimes it's like that. Uh, in the old Indian. Tradition. There was one saint. He also, you know, <laughs> he wakes up all right, but you know, he sleeps sitting instead of lying. So it's just the same. <laughs> our people are same, you know. When you go to our retreat, they come to my house. They sit there, look very good, but so, <laughs> yeah, they sit any fashion, you know. <laughs> so never mind. You try your best. Yeah, that's what counts. So that person, the saint in India, you know what he did. He has a long hair like me, and he tied his hair uh, onto the ceiling or something. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> and then he became a master. Yeah, because he tried so hard. He tied his hair onto the ceiling, so whenever he not, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should grow your hair long or do that. But <laughs> you find your way, yeah. Like we wake up early, and in the beginning, I had to put like ice water next to me, you know, a flask of ice. And then when the alarm rang, I reached for the ice and threw it on my face, and uh, oh, blah! <laughs> you know, the ice come, <laughs> the ice comes through your clothes and everything, and you just had to jump out of bed. <laughs> But don't, don't do it. Just don't. Do it. I mean, you have your own ways. But when you want to do something, you can. Believe me, you can, because you are God. There's nothing impossible with God. Just remember that you have God inside you, and now no one else is there. Don't listen to the mind and the brain. This is just a computer. Yeah, the mind tells us, "Oh, sleep, sleep, sleep is good for you." <laughs> But that's not God's voice. God is behind that. Yeah. Do you ever meet with Kuan Yin? Oh yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> you can see all the saints from the past if you want to, or you have to work hard, tie your hair to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know why many yogis in India they have long hair, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are a perfect, innate expression of life. We are already divine. If God is everything without duality, then everything we are, everything we do, is an expression of God. So, do we need then to do nothing, just to be without reward? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. 
That's fine too. As I said earlier, you chose to be what you want to be. But there are many aspects of God, you see. God is a total sum of our being. Yes? So if we want to say that we are God, of course we are already God. That is for sure. But then go back to the finger. See? Suppose we say, okay, I'm God now. I don't need to do anything. It's fine. But then we go out and steal or we, or we do things that's not proper and uh, or we harm other beings because we say every expression is God anyway. So we don't try to be better. We don't try to represent ourselves in all the aspects of divine quality and just concentrate on one point and do the physical things. And in that case, even though we are God, we have not the whole complete quality. We have not expressed ourselves in the whole complete way. So that is the only difference. Once we know the whole thing, the total sum of God, we act differently. We don't just look at the finger, we know the whole being, and that is different. If I just sit here and look at the finger, I look different, you know? Why, my God, nice finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when I know my whole being, then I stand up, I walk, see? I sing, I embrace people, I greet people with love, I write poetry, I play music, yeah? I go swimming. I do all kinds of things which is the whole being would do, you see? But if I keep looking at one finger only, I still have the whole being here, but it's useless. See what I mean? That's the difference. That's the difference between knowing the whole being of God and just saying, okay, whatever I do is God anyway. Yeah. But of course, you are divine already, so you choose what you are doing. I'm just answering your question. The next yeah. question is in two parts. Where in the Himalayas did you learn your spiritualism? Oh, that mm. is a secret. <laughs> <laughs> what guided you to go there? My inner, inner self. I was blind, blindly in love with God. I would not advise you to go there because you might not come back. It's very dangerous places where I went. Uh, I have talked about that some, some time before I remember, right? So maybe you just search out for those tapes or something and listen, okay? Dear Master Ching Hai, would you please explain ghosts to us? Ghosts? Mm, do you uh -huh. And then asks, do you believe in them? No, oh, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> do you see ghosts? Any one of you see ghosts? Raise your hand. Oh, what do they look like? Huh? Great? Then they are not ghosts, they are angels. <laughs> okay, what she mean, the, the person who asked me, the ghost who's scary, right? Okay, there are different levels of life, as I have told you before. Even us, we are also part human, part ghost. But we only know that when we die. <laughs> Actually, there are just different levels of living. See, for example, here uh, we live as human beings, there's other live as worms and ants, and then other level of consciousness, they don't live with this physical body, they live with an astral body. And uh, some people who die uh, live within that astral body, which looks exactly like his body right now. So sometimes he thinks he's still a human being, I mean a physical being. So he comes and talks to people, he tries to throw tantrums because nobody listens to him. Nobody even knows that he exists. He goes through people, goes through wars, and he talks to everyone, and he tries to get back his possessions and his loved ones. And he was very frustrated sometimes, and then he, he, he scared people. He used all his spiritual might to, to, to manifest in something, and that's when we say we see ghosts. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nothing scary about ghosts. And these so-called ghosts, after some time, they will realize that they're so-called dead, meaning they don't have physical body anymore, and nobody understands them anymore. Then they will begin to also turn inward or seek help from angels, or some beings will go take care of them. It's like police in, 
in our planet. Yeah? And then they will be gone, gone somewhere that they belong. Right? Maybe go to heaven, maybe go to lower heaven or higher heaven, depends on their merit and their understanding at that time. How many times do we need to come to this planet before we become enlightened? And where do we go when we are not in a physical body? We come as many times as we choose to come. We choose to come. Yeah? For example, there are some people who are supposed to die already, but then some relatives are crying and loving and needing them so much, they come back to physical life immediately. That's a reborn. There's a resurrection. And sometimes we go to heaven already, but we like to uh, have the human beings experience again for our own uh, pleasure or our own development. And sometimes we come back because some loved ones are still there calling us and wanting us to be with them. And we, we choose to come back. Yeah? And if we have not realized God, in a physical body, sometimes we choose to come back so that we can realize God on a higher level. And if we are not in the physical body, we can go in many different places. We are more free, 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 like birds. We can fly anywhere in an instant. For example, if I die and I want to go to Germany, we don't need an airplane, just one thought will be there right away. One second, one instant. And that's that is the freedom of not having a body. But nevertheless, if we have not trained ourselves during our lifetime to think highly, to remember our higher self, then when we die, we leave the physical body, we just linger on the lower level of ourselves without realizing the higher aspect of the divine self. So we might linger there and then we get born and then we come back to the physical body again, or we might be lucky meeting some spiritual friend, and then we inch our way up, or we go back to the uh, physical body and get a teacher and learn properly, and then go. Pshit. Yeah. So it depends on what we chose to do in this uh, physical life. We will be at that level when we die. Gracious viewers, we appreciate your presence today on Words of Wisdom. Please join us tomorrow for part 7 of the question and answer section of this lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai. Coming up next is Minister Audrey Tang using technology to enhance democracy, part 1 of 3, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more inspiring programs. May your caring actions be rewarded in the infinite grace of heaven. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com barre oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Unsere Sendungen bieten viele Sprachen. Gehen Sie auf suprememastertv.com schrägstrich schedule und suprememastertv.com schrägstrich WOW.